Wait, what? You, you paid 500 for a hair dryer? It was suggested that I do an unboxing and a review of this $500 Canadian or 400 American Dyson hair dryer. I know they make good products, they make good vacuum cleaners, but $500? It was also suggested that I wear a wig for this video, but the hair on the wig isn't a good representation of human hair and it could melt, right? The price is the bad news. Here's the good news. It came with a platinum gift bag used to store the hair dryer. I also got money back using Ebates. Ebates is like an affiliate marketer with lots of merchants. You get 8% back when purchasing a hair dryer such as this. It's really popular in Canada. I'll put a link below if you're interested in knowing more about that. So let's see what $500 gets you for a hair dryer. Everything is padded so it doesn't move around during shipment. That's good. So the first thing here is a diffuser that's used to dilute the air and reduce frizz. And we have two almost identical attachments. One is a little bit larger than the other one. The larger one is like a smoothing nozzle, I think it's called. And that's for direct airflow and styling and drying. And the styling concentrator is a smaller version of the smoothing one, but it's used more for styling instead of drying. Here we have uh, documentation. Hello, welcome to your new hair dryer. There's some official documentation, there's serial numbers and stuff on the back. Here's some information on attachments, we'll get into that later. And we have an operating manual with uh, instructions and warnings, so have a read of that. And here we have a mini strap in case you want to hang the dryer on a hook. And that actually gets attached right here to the rubber part where the cord comes out of the hair dryer. Here we have a piece of rubber which is a non-slip mat and that's to put on your vanity so that you don't scratch up your hair dryer and it protects your vanity from any heat. Then we have the cord. It has this block on it part way up and there's the plug. Very heavy thick plug. It's a 1600 watt hair dryer so you would expect a nice thick plug on it like that. Seems like it's quite long as well, which is all good. So let's have a close up look at the hair dryer itself. So there's a bunch of buttons on here. There's uh, this button with the red on, that's for the heat settings. It's off, high, medium, and low. And then there's one that has a fan shape on it. That there, that's three settings for the fan, low, medium, and high. And there's a sliding power button on it here. And then a cool button, which turns off the heat while it's pressed and just puts out a blast of cold air. The motor is in the handle and let's remove the plastic here and after you use it for a while you may end up getting some dust sucked into it but here at the bottom there is a filter so this just turns and slides off and you can remove any dust that could be accumulated right there. The overall though it's uh, pretty lightweight it uh, feels like a really good quality very sturdy and let's have a look at the free gift, which was this Dyson storage bag. I'm going to be disappointed if this isn't real platinum. No, it's not. It's uh, just a, a bag, it has a really nice soft feel inside. There's two sides to it. There's a micro pack recyclable sticker in there. And let's see if it fits. Not the, not the best fit. Okay, once you get it in past the handle, past the cord there, it seems okay. And then the cord can go on the other side. Yeah, that'll fit. It has a magnetic seal on it and like a thick piece of plastic here inside to, uh, to support the opening and closing. So how does an IT guy who hasn't dried his hair in about 10 years actually review a hair dryer like this? Well, I've got a thermal camera here, I've got a wind measuring device, I've got a power meter and a decibel meter. So let's compare the operations of this hair dryer to the operations of the previous hair dryer that my wife owns, which would just be some typical $100 hair dryer from the local drugstore. 
Oh, one more thing. You got to check out how the attachments go on. They're magnetic, so they just snap on and they snap off really easily, but they won't fall off during normal operation, which is pretty cool, pretty, uh, pretty creative. So for the first test, we're going to look at the wattage. So I've got my watt meter plugged in, and without it turned on, we see that it consumes 0.3 watts. So let's go through the various settings and see how much power it consumes. So this is slow and cool, and we're at 48. Me medium and cool, 87. Fast and cool, 113. So now let's compare that to the standard hair dryer. And we'll start off cool and low. 146. So that concludes the wattage test. Next we're going to move into the wind test where hopefully we're going to reach that supersonic speed of 768 miles an hour. I'll be testing the wind at one foot away from the wind meter and I'll be using each of these various attachments. So for the first test we're not going to use any attachment and we're going to put the fan on low. diffuser. Okay, so let's see how this hair dryer performs. So there are no attachments for this hair dryer, we just have the high and low. So let's see what low does. So next we're going to test how loud each of these hair dryers are from one foot away from my decibel meter. So most of the noise comes from the base. I'll put that one foot away from the phone. So let's compare that to this hair dryer on low. Again, most of the sound is coming from right here. So for this last test, we're actually going to look at the heat produced by these hair dryers and measure the temperature from one foot away. So for this test, I'm just going to simply point the hair dryer at the table and then measure the temperature and then show you what the images look like. So I'm just going to move over to another area right here because uh, it's still pretty, pretty warm here on this side. And let's have a look inside the hair dryer and see what the temperature is there. So that's my review using the tools that I have at my disposal. The wattage numbers between the two hair dryers are very similar at the maximum fan and heat settings. The Dyson does, however, output more air in all comparable settings. In the sound test, the Dyson wins there with a noticeable difference as it is quieter. When testing the thermal output, the standard hair dryer was a little bit warmer, but the heat is not always good as it may burn your hair. The internal temperature of the Dyson was definitely higher as we saw on the thermal image. So back to the cost. The price is closer to supersonic than the measured wind speed, but is it worth the price tag? Overall, the performance was great and my wife's now been using it for a few weeks and only has one complaint, that if she's not using a attachment, then the wind whistles in her ears. So it's lightweight, it's compact, it feels like it's built to last, but only time will tell. If it lasts 10 years, I would be happy with that. So all the products I'm using in today's video, including the ones that for testing, they, there's more information on those available at my blog at newfieboard.com. I'll put the link in the description below. I also will have all my test results there. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel.